No. Factory and polynomials here. Section 6.4. Last section of the chapter that we're going to do. You do have to remember some factoring from Algebra 1. So we will use some factoring sec sets from Algebra 1. But factoring polynomials, section 6.4. Polynomials, what does a polynomial mean again, Harv? What's the Latin, we can break it down from Latin term, meaning what? Terms. Not number terms, but? Many terms. many terms. Polynomials, again, meaning many terms. So we're going to factor when we have sets of many terms. Factoring polynomials here. Here's kind of the process we're going to be looking through. All right, we're going to look at polynomials in a sense like this. And we're going to factor by grouping. Okay, now grouping means you're going to take sets of two, essentially, and factor each set. All right, so we take this polynomial, and if you notice, they grouped it by taking the left and the right side is what I call that. They group together the different sides of the polynomial. Now, why do they group them? Because then we're going to factor out. Now, really, factoring is nothing more than you are undistributing. Okay, you are pulling something out. That's what it is. So factoring means to undistribute or pull out. For instance here, the first one, x cubed plus 4x squared, you think about what do they both have in common that I can pull out. That's what we're looking at. What do they both have something in common that I can pull out in front? Now, the first one has 3x's, x cubed. The second one has 2x's, x squared. So they have 2x's in common, which means x squared is what comes out. And again, it's undistributing, so I'm pulling it out. We're going backwards from distributing or backwards from multiplying in a sense, if you want to think about it that way. Now the right side. I have negative 9x minus 36. There are no x's in common there. There's just numbers, so I'm pulling a number out. They're both divisible by a 9, or technically a negative 9 here, so I pull the negative 9 out. Now here is your checks, checkpoint. This step right here, these parentheses <coughs> have to be the same. That's your checkpoint. They have to be the same because they come down here to give us our first answer then. If you notice, they come down there. The leftovers, see what's underlined? They form my second factor there. They form the second factor. So I have x squared minus 9. Now this will be the review part of Algebra 1. This is what's called a difference of squares. It goes back to remembering factoring. For instance, x squared plus 0x minus 9 would be the same thing. Now in a different set here, I'll give you a different problem to think about factoring. For instance, if you have the problem x squared plus 6x plus 8, Hopefully you can, you can recall factoring as in what multiplies to get 8, adds to get 6. Remember doing those number sense problems? You should. So what are two numbers that multiply to get 8, add to get 6? They are 2 and 4. So for instance, that would factor as x plus 2 and x plus 4. But we are looking at this problem over here that is x squared plus 0x minus 9. So what multiplies to get negative 9 adds to get 0? It's actually 3 and negative 3. It's a difference of squares because they're the same number, different signs. And that's where we factor out our two other terms, giving us the answer x plus 4, x plus 3, x minus 3. For the most part today, all of your answers will have three different terms there. Yes, ma'am. So That's what breaks down to x plus 3, x plus x minus 3. For instance, um, Tiana, if I were to FOIL this part right here, I would end up with x squared minus 9. Like x times, if you were to go back and FOIL that, you would end up with x squared minus 9. So that's what it is factoring it down. So we're breaking that down to get x plus 3, x minus 3. We're trying to factor it down as low as we can. Okay, let's start walking through these. With repetitions, it gets pretty good. Okay, the first couple, I have them stepped out already for us, for the most part. They'll come. Patience. 
There we go. So number one here. Factor each expression. I have x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 12. And as you see, they've already grouped it. They took the left side and they took the right side. Does everybody see how they did that on the next step? That's all they've done so far. So they took the grouping and then they pulled out what was in common. For instance, this one here, they both had an x squared in common. That pulls out. It's like dividing in a sense or, pull, or undistributing. Either way you want to look at it. Again, if I were to distribute back, I would go up and get that part right there. So it's all equiv equivalent. The next side, I'm looking at negative 4x plus 12. What do they both have in common? A negative 4. Now you could say a positive 4, yes, but then your parentheses would not be the same. So I pull out a negative 4. Okay, they both have a 4 in common. And again, I'm dividing it out. 12, div neg 12 divided by negative 4 is a negative 3, so I have subtraction. Here's our checkpoint. Are the parentheses the same? Yes, they are. That is key. Because those parentheses then come down to form the first part of my answer, x minus 3. That is the first part of my answer. The leftovers, as I call them, would be what forms your second part. So those come down over here to give us x squared minus 4. So x minus 3, parentheses, x squared minus 4. From here, now I'm going to look to factor this right side. Now, x squared minus 4 is really the same thing as x squared plus 0x minus 4. So I can use that same philosophy of what multiplies to get negative 4, adds to get 0. So what are two numbers that are multiplying to get negative 4, add to get 0, colon? Very good. 2 and negative 2. So now I can factor down, getting my answer. The x minus 3 is still going to come down. I get x minus 3. Parentheses, x plus 2. And x minus 2. And that is my answer right there. Again, this is kind of going backwards from multiplication, as in we are factoring. We're finding what they have in common, and we're going to pull it out. All right, good work. <clears throat> Let's try another one here. Number two, I have x cubed plus 6x squared minus x minus 6. So I have it already broken down. You can see the um, groupings, x cubed plus 6x squared. And then I have negative x minus 6. So I have them two grouped together. So the left side over here, what do they both have in common that I can pull out? What do you say, Nick? Very good. They have an x squared in common. So I take an x squared out of both. So x squared, parentheses, x plus 6. Now I look at the right side. What does the right side have in common? What do you say, Colton? Very good. They have a negative 1. So I'm going to pull a negative 1 out of both, giving me x plus 6. Here's my checkpoint. Are my parentheses the same? Yes, that's the good. You need those parentheses to be the same. If they're not the same there, go back and check. You might have made a mistake. From there then, those parentheses come down to give me one part of my answer, which is x plus 6. What's the second part of my answer going to be, Tiana? Oh, well, that is my full answer. Nice job. We're not there yet, though, but nice job that you got that figured out. I would take my leftovers here, getting x squared minus 1. You're right, you're ahead of the game, you're good. So now I want to factor x squared minus 1. And I think of that, I think of what multiplies to get negative 1, adds to get 0. And Tiana, those, that would be? Tiana? So 1 and negative 1, nice job giving me my final answer, x plus 6, parentheses, x plus 1, and x minus 1. 
And that is our answer right there. Again, it's this step right here that you've got to use your algebra skills to recall factoring, um, factoring a quadratic. Let's try number three. Now we start all the way from the top. We're going to start all the way from the top. X cubed plus X squared minus 9X minus 9. What's the first thing I want to do, Shanks? What? Break them down, right? So I have my left side, X cubed plus X squared. And I have my right side, negative 9X minus 9. First step, break down the left side, break down the right side. From there, I need to now factor... What does that left side have in common, Schultz? An x squared. Nice job. Now here, pay attention here because this is where some students will make a mistake. I pull an x squared out. Leave me with an x plus 1. I need that 1 as a placeholder there. A lot of times when students will factor out the x squared there, they will just try and eliminate the 1. I still need the placeholder there. And why is it not zero? And why is it one? Well, zero would mean that it doesn't exist, right? I don't have it there. Because you multiply by zero, you don't need it. One would mean I multiply and I get x squared. So I need the one there. On the right side, what would I pull out, Harv? Nice job, sir. Giving me the same x plus one. And again, why is that? Because negative 9 divided by a negative 9 will give me that positive 1. So it's the same thing, pulling out that 9. From there, are my parentheses the same? Yes. Parentheses are the same. So those come down and get me one answer, which is x plus 1. What's going to be my second part here that comes down? Jesse, what do you say, man? Okay, well, you're, you're a step ahead of me again. It's all right. What's that underlined, Jesse? X squared minus 9. Great. Now I can factor down that part. Good, Jesse. You have that already. So what multiplies to get negative 9 adds to get 0, Jesse? You said it was? Good job, sir. 3 and negative 3. So now I can factor down that last step, giving me my answer, x plus 1, parentheses, x plus 3, parentheses, x minus 3. What do they have in common? Huh? So that's what we're pulling out is x's here. So, for instance, if I were to say, if I give you the problem 6x plus 8, what do they both have in common that you can pull out? They have more than one. They're both even numbers. So, we're pulling a 2 out, getting us 2 parentheses 3x plus 4. Yeah, what multiplies into both of them is what we're doing, and they're pulling it out. You're simplifying it down. All right, here it is. Try number four on your own. Take a couple seconds. So you factor it left and right sides. So I have x cubed plus 2x squared plus a negative 16x minus 32. I have the left and right sides there. I pull out the left side. What do they both have in common? X squared. So I pull that out. X plus 2. Right side, they both have a negative 16. So I get X plus 2. Self-check again. Parentheses are the same. They need to be the same there. If they're ever different signs, you probably need to pull a negative out or something. That's kind of what you check. Now it comes down. That forms one part, getting us X plus 2. The other part comes down as x squared minus 16. From there, it's what multiplies to get negative 16, adds to get 0, and I get my answer, which is what, Marisol? Negative 
Or did you have a Marisol or not? So if, what multiplies get what multiplies get negative sixteen? Adds to get zero. Huh? What multiplies to get negative sixteen adds to get zero? Not eight. Four and negative four? I get 4 and negative 4, which is x plus 4 and x minus 4. There's your answer. Not yet, sir. Try number 5 here. Now, notice, Tiana asked the question. It's a great question. Notice this is a quadratic. It's a quadratic because it has an x squared term. So that means I'm only going to have two factors here. So instead of my answer having 3 down at the bottom, I'm only going to have 2. So break it up right here, and I would factor it right from there. Take a couple seconds to try this out. All right, watch as we go through this one. Check yourself here. On the left side, you'd pull a 2x out, giving us 2x, parentheses, x plus 4. On the right side, I'd pull a 2 out, giving me x plus 4. Self-check, parentheses, they are the same. And again, remember, because this is a quadratic, I'm only going to have two factors. This comes down to give me 1, which is x plus 4. My leftovers form the other one, 2x plus 2. And that is it right there. That's all you have to do. Try number six. Take up seconds. Try this one. All right, I'm going to slowly start work, working through this one. Keep working if you are. You want to pull out an x squared out of the first one, a negative one out of the second one, giving me my parentheses the same now. I bring down x plus 2, my leftovers, x squared minus 1. Now I factor down my difference of squares here. What's well, going to multiply to get negative 1, add to get 0. That would be 1 and negative 1, which I now get my answer as x plus 2, parentheses, x plus 1, and x minus 1. Because that comes from the, this is really x squared plus 0x minus 1 in the full quadratic form. Does that make sense now? Um, if you think you're good, you think you feel pretty good? Yeah. Okay, here's your assignment. 